This video is sponsored by Regin Dojo, which offers training courses for Regin and technical art from veterans of the industry. Head over to Regin Dojo to find more about it. Hello guys, so welcome back. So, as promised, um, I'm going to make a series of videos about the language itself, right? How I handle the language, how I parse it, how I generate the instruction, right? So I'm trying to put the information up there. Uh, it's nothing new. There are several tutorials around, but basically that's how I handle it, right? And so you can see how you can go about it and how you can do it yourself. So there are three main stages in processing the language. So the first part is extracting tokens from your string, right? Basically your source file. And a token is made is basically something that makes sense of its own, right? Uh, it can be a variable, it can be so a name, it can be uh, punctuation, so like semicolon, it can be operators, like multiply, divide, it can be built-in words, right? It can be all these kind of things, and we're going to see how I'm handling that, right? So, the way I decided to do it is using regex, right? Uh, which you might know about it, but in the end, basically, regex builds a state machine, right? Which implements the rules that you say in your expression, right? And then you parse the string, it keeps evaluating the state machine until something yields, right? Something like this. Uh, so you can do that yourself, or I just use the regex module coming uh, with C++. Uh, I think it comes with C++11, but you need to be careful that if you use GCC 4.8, which most of the, the VFX platform is on, it's garbage. It's not working, right? So working code running on 4.8 doesn't work, right? Uh, I updated to 5.4 and works like a charm, right? So you need to be aware of that. Um, also, I, I use Clang. Uh, I use MVCC uh, 2017. It works. Clang from Trunk. So Clang 6 works. So the only limitation was on GCC, right? So it, you need to use a fairly new one if you want to use this. Otherwise, you can use other regex library. But anyway, so this is the whole regex handling my language, all right? That's it. That's the whole thing. And we're going to see quickly what it does, right? So the first line, it basically removes every possible space, white space, tab, blah, 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 right? And they are optional. So they might be there or not. Then it tried to grab every single combination of letters and numbers, right? Started with a letter. Um, and then basically as many of those, right? And actually, sorry, it actually starts with a letter and then every possible words matching that. And by word, we mean also numbers, right? So the first letter needs to be, the first things needs to be a letter because you cannot have a variable starting with a number. Then we actually try to find numbers. So we see, for, we check for every possible digit, a dot, and uh, any one of those, right? So technically, the regex will work if you start with a dot as well, although I don't directly support it. But anyway, the next line, we check for every possible type, uh, sorry, symbol we support. So you see, we check for curly braces, uh, round braces, plus, minus, open round, close round, semicolon, all this kind of stuff, right? And then the last one just takes care of new lines, right? That's the whole thing. So it tried to match my tokens based on this rule, and that's it. That's the only thing I need. I don't need anything more. I might need to touch that when I will need to support um, multiple uh, combination of symbols, right? which might be just basically a list one. Something like this should work, uh, but I didn't support yet because I don't support, for example, minus equal is not supported, plus plus equals equal is not supported yet. Now, once you have your token as a string, your whole goal is to map that to actual token in the language, right? So I have an enum defining all the possible token I support, right? So you see, for example, for data, I have an identifier, you have a number, you have node pointers, I have struct, then I have operator, assignment operator, all these kind of things, right? So the lexer, the only thing it does, grabs the token, so splits the string, and then identify the token. It doesn't care if the tokens make sense together. That will be part of the 
the parser, right? So one thing I do, I have a struct number where basically with a union, so I can uh, I can put in numbers and I can read that as a float or as an integer depending on the type, right? That's a little trick where basically you can handle both floating points and integer in the same struct. Uh, since both are 32 bits, that's good. Now, the next big thing is basically being able to map um, built-in words, right? Built-in keywords. So keywords I do support. So I just have a static map, declare, where basically I just try to check if my token, so my string that I matched is in this map, I return the corresponding token. Otherwise, I parse it and, and try to figure out what it is. All right, so here's the rest of the header, nothing to worry about. There are several things uh, like look ahead, all this kind of stuff, but those are not important. We can see that later if you want to know about those details, let me know and I will cover them. But the gist of it is now here, right? So the function is called get talk. That's basically the function that returns the next token in the string, right? Now, uh, forget the look ahead stuff, all this kind of stuff, don't worry about that, it's extra complication. Um, so, there are two things happening, right? So, first of all, uh, I try to handle the match I got, all right? If we have a match, I handle it, meaning I do something with it. If I don't get anything, uh, I check if it's a new line, if it's a new line, I do stuff. Basically, I, I just increment, the, I reset the column number, I increment the offset, the line numbers. It just basically keeps track of where I am in the file and I get the next stock, right? So in this way, basically, I'm keeps keeping new lines. And um, what I do here, right, I check if the token is a built-in keywords, right? If I get... Um, if not, I just basically extract the string. So, right, nothing fancy here. Then I try to check if it's a digit. If it's a digit, I extract the number using process number. And if it's a string, it's alphanumeric, I just return the string, right? And set in the token as an identifier. So, nothing weird here, right? It's all the usual stuff. And then I return. So, we can have really quickly... Again, it's built-in keywords, doesn't do anything fancy, just checking the map, right? We have a map keywords, we saw that earlier here. Where is it? Keywords, that's our map, I just find it. If I find the, the whatever it is, I return the token, otherwise I return no match. So let's go back. So, sorry, get token, here we go. Otherwise, it's new line. Uh, basically, sorry, here, if it's, if it's not a match, I handle the, the no match. No match can be several things, it can be uh, the pointer is null or is an end of file, right? So basically here I handle the end of file. Or otherwise, for example, we have process number, it's the last thing we need to worry about. And process number is nothing fancy, but basically what it does is that we loop all the numbers, right? If we find a digit, we continue, right? Okay, means it's a digit, that's good. If we find a dot, we keep track of that, right? And of course, we also check that we already didn't find a dot. If any reason this fails, right? So we get here, we don't get inside the continue, I return malform number, right? So then we can check an error against that. Then, if, it's, if I have a dot, it means it's a floating point, so I generate a floating point, so setting that using the union as a float number, otherwise uh, I generate an uh, integer. Alright? That's the gist of it. So that's how I'm mapping my tokens. So you see, it's nothing fancy. There is a bit of extra stuff for the look ahead. Basically, look ahead is basically extract tokens and keep track of that. So when I ask for the next token, if they are in the queue, it returns them. And the look ahead is useful when you have ambiguity in your language, right? For example, try to think of it in C++, you find an identifier. An identifier can be uh, a data type, and if it's a data type, then it can be a variable declaration, a variable assignment, it can be a function declaration, it can be 
uh, cast, it can be so many different things, right? So you need to look ahead to see what the other tokens are in order to make sense of your language. That's what look ahead is doing, all right? And this is all basically crap. We'll handle that. Um, I will point you to the code. Go look at that directly. It's called Lexer CPP and Lexer H. And that's super straightforward. You see, like 200 lines in the header and 200 in the in the CPP, we are able to lex our whole language, so extract all the tokens that we need. And to be honest, it's it's rare that they go and touch touch the lexer. Usually, I just add extra extra things, uh, extra token, but usually are built-in tokens in the language, so nothing to do there. They're just I update the token list. I update the map, and usually my job is done in the lexer. So the whole thing is the big part in the parser, right? And probably we're going to spend a couple of videos in the parser. But uh, that's it for today's. I hope you like it. Uh, see you in the next video.